deep web is one of the most amazing things on earth. Not because of how joyful it makes people or anything, but because it is a completely uncensored view of people. You can speak your mind, buy what you want, do anything you want. When on the deep web, you have complete and total freedom. I had always been fascinated by the deep web, and at the time of this event and this story occurred, I was in college. Lots of people at my campus had really been getting into accessing the deep web. It was almost like a trend, with so many people getting in on it, it seemed perfectly safe for me to give it a try. Now I had always heard of the deep web horror stories. Stories of hacking, stumbling on disgusting sites, and people even somehow finding your address. These stories were mainly what kept me off of the deep web. But with most of the people at my college using it on a normal basis, I decided to give it a go. I asked a friend to come over and help me set it up. When my friend arrived, we opened up my laptop and began to set everything up. He told me we were using Tor, a program that lets you access deep web. He also asked me if I was planning on doing anything illegal, to which I replied no. He said that since I wasn't, we didn't need to install Tails, which apparently is a software that makes it more secure if you plan on doing illegal things. A little while later, everything was set up. I had my new IP address and my friend gave me a brief rundown of what to do and what not to do. He made it very clear that when I was using the hidden wiki, that I keep it on censored mode so that it wouldn't be less likely for me to see something I didn't want to see. After about two weeks of using the deep web, I felt like a pro. I had accessed many different sites, spoken with some great people, made friends, even bought some weed. I had become cocky and was ready to dig deeper into the dark web. I turned off the censor mode on the hidden wiki and began to browse the links. It took a while, mostly because Tor is a bit slow and many of the links just led to dead web pages. Eventually I stumbled on a site called All the Gore. It was mainly a big chat room with many different topics. I had fairly a strong stomach. I had seen some violent movies and had seen beheadings, killings, etc. through the normal internet. After looking at a few different chat rooms, I noticed how sick this site really was. The people in this chat room were actually killers, bragging about some of the things they had done. In the chat room, you could also post pictures. One man by the name Culture045 had the stage in one of the chat rooms. He was explaining in detail how he had broke into someone's house, kidnapped a little girl and brutally killed her parents by hiding under their bed and then opening their throats. He then explained how he brought the little girl back to his house, raped her, beat her, and cut her up. I didn't think he was telling the truth at first, but then he posted pictures. They were the most horrifying pictures I had ever seen. Close-ups of the poor 8-10 to 10 year old girl being brutally raped, beaten, and cut with a knife. Culture kept posting pictures. The ones were the little girl tied to a chair, bleeding, crying, throwing up, etc. Then he showed a picture of him with a drill drilling into her skull. The most haunting part is that while he was doing it, he was looking at the camera with the sheer joy on his face. I had seen enough and typed in the chat room, you people are sick, you deserve to die, how can you sleep at night? Immediately people began making fun of me, saying that I was just as helpless and ignorant as the little girl in the picture, and that I should get off the big boy part of the internet. They began saying I was a pussy and calling me an empath. When Culture typed something in the chat box, he said, really? Where do you live, buddy? I'm sure everybody would love to see you on this site. I then made the biggest mistake of my life and typed, I'm calling the police and having this site shut down. Less than a minute later, everything on the site went black and then a new chat box appeared in green. In it, someone named Admin1 typed in the box. He said, call the cops and you will regret it. I didn't type anything in the box and reached for my cell phone. What happened next haunts me to this day. My phone said I had a message. I opened it and it said, call the police and you're dead. There was no number. I didn't even say unknown number. It was just blank. I looked back at my laptop and saw my webcam light turned on. I quickly covered it, but I saw on the screen a picture of me looking at my phone. I got wide-eyed and froze for a moment. When the admin typed again, put the phone down right now and uncover your webcam. I put my phone down but kept the webcam covered. 
When he typed again, okay then, be like that. Right after, he posted my full name, age, and address in the chat box and typed, It would be a shame if you and your college buddies went missing, wouldn't it? He said. I then did as he said, and uncovered my webcam. He then told me to follow his instructions on how to make it impossible for me to reach the site again. I followed each and every one. When I finished, I got a text that said, Now don't ever try to come back. Just like before, he had no number. I still called the police from my friend's phone, but they were never able to find the site. If you ever go on the deep web, don't ever just mindlessly explore, especially if you don't have additional software to keep you more secure. I was a stupid college kid, and I just hope nobody makes the same mistake I did. I moved to a different home and changed all my information, but I still get nightmares to this day. Fast forwarding a few days, and I was still extremely rattled by what had happened. The police tried to track down the website, but since there was no way for them to recover my history, I had originally found the sick site by just randomly clicking links. It seemed pretty hopeless to find it. The police told me to change all my information about myself and to move in with a friend. After changing pretty much all of my information, I decided to move in with my friend David. David was an extremely honest, hardworking person. He never went to parties, slacked off, got drunk, high. He was very dedicated to finishing college. In fact, he was one of the few kids I knew at the time who wasn't getting on the deep web regularly. I had told him all about my experience with the deep web and that's mostly why he agreed to let me stay with him. One night, we were both up studying very late when my phone went off. I looked to see who had texted me and saw that the person sending the message had no number just like last time. It read, check your computer. There was nothing else to it, just one simple instruction. I opened my laptop and when I did, I noticed that I didn't have control of the mouse. I tried to move it, but the mouse just moved on its own. Someone had remote access to my computer somehow. I never gave anyone remote access before. Uh, I tried a whole bunch of keyboard commands, but not a single one worked. I noticed that whoever had control of my laptop was downloading a software, most likely malware, but there was nothing I could do. I heard my phone go off again and this time the message read, look out your window. I was sitting right by a window. I didn't know which window the guy was referring to so I looked out the one I was sitting by and saw a man in the parking lot leaning up against a white van. He had a phone in his hand and when I looked at him, he nodded. My phone went off again. Type in and hold down shift alt F5 at the same time to activate the software. I called in David to my room to show him what was going on. He seemed just as nervous as I was, but with the man just outside our window, we didn't want to anger him. David called the police right away and told me that they would be there soon. I didn't activate the software and just sat there. Eventually I got another text. I'm coming in if you don't do it right now. I didn't know why he or the person in control of my computer couldn't do it, but I didn't dare to ask. At the same time though, I was 99% sure that this program had malware or spyware or something that would be very harmful to my computer, so I refused to activate it. David grabbed a baseball bat just in case the man outside tried to come in. About 5 minutes later, we, we heard the doorknob turning. It was locked, but we then heard banging on the door. We both freaked out and I looked out the window again. Sure enough, the man and the van were gone. The banging on the door got more and more violent until eventually we heard a horrible scratching sound. At least a few more minutes and then we heard footsteps walking down the hall and eventually fade away. I received another text, we will be back. That really got to me. When the cops arrived, they told me to look at my front door. I followed them back out of the hallway and saw engraved in my door my name. The police began to investigate the whole building and they had a tech police officer come in and look at my computer. He began to do scans and investigate the weird software on my laptop. Eventually he managed to close and remove it and told me that my laptop isn't safe. He said the core files of it had been hacked into corrupted. We did a complete wipe of my laptop and he looked at my phone as well. Just like last time, he couldn't tell me where the messages came from and told me that they would be sure to keep the cops nearby in case anything ever happened again. 
The next day, I had just got home from school and was very tired. David wasn't home from school yet, so I went into my room and fell into the bed. I had just began to close my eyes when I heard a rattling sound in my closet. I lifted my head up and didn't hear it again, so I went back to sleep. After a few minutes, the closet door swung open. I leaped out of bed and saw a man with a mask walking over to me. I ran for the door and slammed it behind me. I ran out to the parking lot, started my car, and drove away as fast as I could. By the time the police arrived, the man was of course gone. The apartment surprisingly hadn't been wrecked or anything. We didn't even find anything stolen. He didn't seem to do anything at first. Um... That night, two police officers were monitoring everyone who came in and out of the building in order to catch the man. I opened my laptop and noticed that my wallpaper had changed. It was just a bunch of trees, but it had been changed to a sickening photo of a man with a mask. The same mask that I saw on the man who was in my closet, digging a knife into a baby's eye in what looked like a small cabin. I also noticed that all my applications and programs were gone, and I saw the same software as last time, right in the middle. I clicked on it, and it had already been installed, just like last time. It filled the entire screen, and what looked like a live stream was going on. I couldn't exit out, and the live stream was coming from a boy's house. He looked about 13 or 14, and was at his computer. It didn't take long for me to see that I was watching through his webcam, and he had no idea. I saw a small chat box pop up in the right top corner of the screen, and in it, someone typed in the box, Welcome to our live stream. We are glad everyone could be here. Thank you, John, for being here as well. My eyes got very wide. My name was John, and they were waiting until I was watching to start the live stream. As I watched, I saw that the closet door behind the poor boy slowly opened, and a man walked out with a toolbox in one hand. He quietly set the toolbox down and pulled out some duct tape. He went behind the kid and put the tape over his mouth and grabbed him tight. The poor kid's face was total fear. He tried to scream, but he couldn't because of the tape. They were making a decent amount of noise, so it told me that the kid must have been home alone. I tried hard to exit out, but I couldn't. I then saw the man take out a screwdriver and drive it into the kid's chest. Blood began to pour out, and the kid made an awful wheezing type noise. I saw tears come from his eyes, and the sick man began to drive the screwdriver deeper and deeper, and then yank it out. The man then took out a hammer and smashed the kid's hands several times till they were nothing more than a mangled bloody mess. I tried every command I could to exit out, but nothing was working. I noticed that the chat box several people were cheering the man on and requesting for him to do different things to the boy. The man then took out a handheld electric saw, pressed it against the boy's face, and turned it on. The boy screamed with pain as the saw went up into his eye, causing blood to go everywhere and got the camera a little as well. I started to get tears in my eyes as I couldn't stop it. Then, the man took the screwdriver, gouged out the kid's eyes, and took out a large knife. He proceeded to slit the boy's throat and tossed him on the ground. I was sick. I threw up all over the floor, and when I looked back, I saw the chat box, people typing in horrible things like, Oh my god, that was wonderful, thanks so much for doing this, etc. In the box, I saw someone named Culture045 type in the box. Thanks for watching, John. After that, the program closed on its own, and I was left with the sickening wallpaper. I was sweating, breathing heavy, and feeling sick. Throughout the entire thing, I didn't realize that my phone had gone off several times. I looked at it, and most hateful, mean messages were coming from my friends and family. I asked my mom what was wrong, and she texted back, you sent that sick, disturbing live stream to everyone. I can't believe who you are. The police have been called. I felt even more sick than before. Those monsters had sent the live stream to all my friends somehow and made it come from me. They had pretty much ruined my life within a couple of minutes. When the police arrived, I told them everything that had happened and quickly they managed to explain to my friends and family what had happened. They really cracked down on finding these people. And a month later, four men had been arrested. One was Culture 045, the other was Admin 1, and the two others were working with them. The site was found and shut down as well, and I got a new laptop and phone. 
I could say some horror cliche and say something like I kept getting texts or kept hearing weird things after since, but none of that happened. They were arrested and I never heard anything further. It's good to know that those men are in jail or perhaps even dead, but what scares me is all of the other people watching the live stream who were there for pleasure are still out there, and that there is probably thousands of other cultures Zero Four Fives out there all over the world. If you ever go on the deep web, make damn sure you're as careful as possible.